Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer for May 11th, 2023. Glad that you are with me. Today is National Eat What You Want Day, Hostess Cupcake Day, interesting those are the same day, Make a Book Day, National Children's Mental Health Awareness Day, National Foam Rolling Day, and National Technology Day. I'm not sure what it says that the National Technology Day picture is really big missile systems, but anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Redeeming God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism, you have clothed us in your grace and made us heirs of your promise. By the power of your Holy Spirit, set us free from all that we fear and let us live according to our faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our reading for today comes from Matthew chapter 24, starting with verse 9. Listen to God's word to speak to you. Then they will hand you over to be tortured and will put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away. And they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But anyone who endures to the end will be saved. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end will come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Jesus is continuing to speak to, these are, he's speaking to the disciples and the sort of idea of this chapter and the next one is apocalyptic. Again, that is about sort of revelation, right? A, a revealing of something and has some overtones of what we call apocalypse, sort of end of the world and that sort of idea. Because that is something that is often taken up during these conversations around apocalyptic things. So Jesus has just said that um, lots of things are gonna, uh, are gonna happen, right? There's gonna be wars and rumors of wars, but they're to be treated as sort of birth pangs. They're, they're just getting things ready. And he continues on, and, and now he's talking about more sort of what are the personal um, things that you're going to experience, right? They will hand you over to be tortured and will put you to death, and you will be hated by nations because of my name. And because of this, many will fall away, and they will 
betray one another and hate one another, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray, and because of the increase of lawlessness, the law of the love of many will grow cold. We talked a little bit yesterday about kind of, we're talking around multiple sort of time frames. We're telling a story said set near the end of Jesus's life. So the disciples are kind of thinking about his, uh, what he's doing there in Jerusalem, probably much more like a coronation, like we just saw, than a crucifixion. Then you have the time frame of the early church, very early church, um, before the destruction of the temple. This There was an expe ex expectation of the immediate coming of the kingdom of God. Jesus dies, rises, and says, I am coming back soon. And then ascends. And they go, great, he's coming back any moment now. And so you have things like Paul saying, don't, don't even get married or don't take up a new job because Jesus is coming soon, like imminently, any moment now. Then we have the time frame of Matthew and his writing this account to a people who have experienced the destruction of the temple. Something really terrible feels like the end of the world, and yet it is not. It's keeping going. And also seeing the beginning of real persecution. Uh, that was a uh, sort of, you saw that in the early church, the early, early church as well, right? With the persecution, uh, specifically the, the Jewish people or the, the Pharisees, especially, uh, Saul was leading them in this persecution of the early church and the Sanhedrin and the sort of the leadership, right? And then they continued, you know, you go through the book of Acts and there's, there's uh, persecution from or, or there's there's all of this sort of infighting, right? So the people who uh, are outside of the church, there's opposition from to the people of the way, the church, right? From uh, the Jewish authorities, but also from Gentiles, right? So there, you know, there's this group of Ephesian uh, idol mer merchants who are mad at Paul because he's uh, telling everybody that. You know, there's only one God and there's no idol for him, right? Um, and they're like, he's gotten into our sails. And so they're mad at him for that, right? So you have that. Then you have this sort of infighting within the, the church. There are those who believe that, um, you know, Gentiles don't deserve this gospel. So there's infighting around that. There are those who say that, okay, sure, the Gentiles can come in, but they have to adopt the uh, the Moses law. They have to become Jewish in order to be saved by Jesus. Um, there are those who say, no, that's not the case. There, there are some who say that we should be worshiping on Saturday, just like we always have. There are some who say we should be worshiping on Sunday um, because that's the day of resurrection. There are some who say that we should eat meat sacrificed to idols because who cares? And some who say, no, we can't possibly do that because there were sacrificed idols. There's all of this sort of like um, back and forth and false prophets and teachers and persecution and all of these sorts of things. And Matthew is trying to prepare his readers that not only are gonna things going to look bad on a sort of national level, but even in a in your own life. There are going to be challenges. There are going to be persecutions. There are going to be all of these sorts of things. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this, I think, is a shift. Because again, the very early church is expecting that Jesus is coming any minute, imminent. It's going to happen any minute second. 
and they've seen the destruction of the temple and they're seeing wars and rumors of wars and they see persecutions and rumors of persecutions. And now the message is shifting. Hey, maybe we misunderstood what Jesus was talking about when he said he was coming back soon. So now it shifts from any minute now Jesus is going to come, so why worry about it? To, well, Jesus is coming back, sure. All things will be well and all manner of things will be well. But this is not a sprint, it's a marathon. run as if you're going you're it's an endurance thing not a well let's just get past the finish line if that is the case for matthew's readers it is very much the case for us some two thousand years after and the church ever since then has been struggling and grappling and figuring out, well, what does it mean that Jesus is coming back soon when soon is 2,000 years? So this message of endurance is very much for us as well. But the difference is, um, I think, more interesting. Because it's not just about time frame, it's also about what is our role in this. I think that the shift is back to, and this is part of what we've seen throughout Matthew's gospel, is sort of, let's get back on track for this, is that the kingdom of heaven is here. See, when the kingdom of heaven is something that is going to inbreak, right, at any moment, well, then it makes sense that we, you know, like just deal with whatever you've got to deal with right now. Don't worry about getting married. Don't, you know, like this is, we're not here for long term. God's just going to come in and fix all the problems. And what Matthew is calling our attention to is a gospel, a good news of the kingdom of heaven that has already come in Jesus Christ. And a kingdom that we are building, that we are citizens of, and that we are participants in, that when we do the work of Jesus Christ, we are building a kingdom. And so it's not get to the finish line as quickly as possible. It's not, you know, look busy, Jesus is coming. It's a, a progress. It's, a, it's a, an endurance. Let's keep building the kingdom of heaven and let's find where, where is the kingdom that we live in, the human kingdom, where is their injustice? Where is their brokenness? Where there, Where is there a lack of mercy or righteousness? How do we build that? Even as there is persecution, because we're speaking against the kingdoms of human beings, because we're not following the status quo, we're not enriching the rich and in pouring the poor, right? That we're actually being countercultural about these things and we're critiquing these things and asking, well, why is it that way? Can't it be better? And so the emphasis is turning now in this sort of later early church. It's still pretty early church. We're still first century to a gospel that says, no, take care of your neighbor. Take care of your community. 
And if people hate you because of it, okay, fine. Endure. Keep doing the work. Keep being the kingdom of heaven in the world. And one day all will be well and all manner of things will be well. In this, it's not God is the one who does everything. Nor is it that we do everything, but that God is calling us to co-creation. To work and endure in the world. To bring about good, the kingdom of heaven, here in this place. Will that job ever be done? No, not until God finishes it. But we also don't sit back and wait for God to just fix everything. Because that is a temptation. And some of our siblings, like, you know, so there has been a resurgence of apocalyptic sort of ideas, right? And this idea that we'll all be, um, all the good people will be drawn up and then there will be all of this terrible stuff that happens to all of the bad people. And then God will make everything right. So it doesn't matter what you do now. In the year 2000, there were a lot of people, or 1999, there were a lot of people who were just literally bought bunkers out in the wilderness expecting for all the world to just fall apart. And frankly, there's a lot of us who are expecting the world to fall apart. Because that doesn't look good. And yet our call is not to throw up our hands and say, oh, oh, oh well. It's to be at work. To make the kingdom of heaven. To share with God in, in bringing about justice and mercy and humility. In our own lives, in the lives of others, in our communities, in our nation in our world. Some people aren't going to like it. Okay. I think there is a major shift here in Matthew's gospel. From what we know of the, the very early church. And now, I guess this is just the early church. shift from an immediate expectation to a more distant one. And what does that mean about how we do the work before us? So where do you see the kingdom of heaven at work? Here and now. Where are you called to participate in the kingdom of heaven? Where is there persecution? We could have a whole conversation about persecution and, and where it actually exists and where maybe it doesn't. But where do you see it? Where are you called to participate in the building of the kingdom of heaven? Take some time to reflect pray, to journal, meditate, consider. And when you're ready, we will join our hearts together in prayer. Man, I'm talking a lot in these ones. I'm sorry. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Eternal God, we praise you for your mighty love given in, Jesus, in Christ's sacrifice on the cross and the new life we have received by his resurrection. Especially we thank you for your great love for the whole world. the plants and animals that provide our food.
those who support us in times of suffering. Accomplishments that are pleasing to you. Expressions of love, unexpected or undeserved. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for the opportunities to participate in the kingdom. God of grace, let our concern for others reflect Christ's self-giving love, not only in our prayers, but also in our practice. Especially we pray for Baptists, Disciples of Christ, Pentecostal, and Free Churches. Victims of tragedy and disaster. Those who are captive or in prison. Those who weep with the grieving. Reconciliation with our enemies. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Jerry, a former co-worker of Bill's. For Vic, a neighbor of Ashley's. For Miss Barbara. For Ernie, who may be needing to have surgery. For death and my extended family. Mr. Ed. Dudley, a friend of Sam and Kelly, and Geraldine, uh, the sister of David R. We pray for Rhea, Beverly's granddaughter, an online request for Viola, Magdalena, and Cordelia, and an unspoken request for someone facing breast cancer as well as all the many prayers that we have on our hearts and minds. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. From the waters of death, you raise us with him and renew your gift of life within us. Increase in our hearts and minds the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, like good stewards of the grace of God, let us serve one another with whatever gifts we have received. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else. Click on the subscription and the notification button. Go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org for more information. Our readings today came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, and our liturgy came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA. You can subscribe to this on YouTube. You can get an email on Substack. You can listen to it on Spotify. Go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.